Hello everyone, back to into today's first video. We're going to do the uh, 30 day look ahead with the ECMWF uh, ensemble model for today's first video from the Hungarian uh, Met Office. I have to go to the Hungarian uh, Met Office to show you uh, these charts. So it's going to take us into the middle of July with the uh, extended ECM. WF Ensemble, it's a regular feature at Gas Office that we do uh, every um, every uh, week uh, on a Tuesday. It's a regular Tuesday uh, feature. So I'll go over that for you in a second. Just say that day second video, we'll be having a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. Signs of a heat wave next week. So um, going to be really interesting uh, video coming up this afternoon, I think. We'll start off, though, with your 30-day uh, look. Okay, so um, we can't show you the uh, sort of mean sea level pressure and 500 millibar height anomalies, unfortunately. Uh, but we can show you the temperature and precipitation anomalies broken down to weak beers for the next 30 days. And we get a rough idea of what the model is, um, is showing in terms of the overall pattern from these temperature and precipitation uh, anomalies. So we begin with um, the week one temperature anomaly. It's actually week 25 for the year, for 2018, but it's week one for um, sort of the forecast period that we're uh, talking about. So um, this is taking us from uh, yesterday, from the 18th through to the 24th of uh, June. So we find that actually it's a bit of a cooler week coming up across uh, many northern and central western parts of Europe compared to what we've had uh, recently. So uh, we've actually got a bit cooler than average over Scandinavia. We've gone cooler than average across much of central uh, and uh, western Europe as well. So France, low countries, Germany, cooler than average there. Parts of the UK and Ireland also going cooler than average. Over south of the UK, it's actually a little bit milder. An average uh, in this week weekly period. Um, Spain, France, and Portugal a bit warmer than average there, but through the Mediterranean, generally still quite cool and cool down into the southeast of Europe, uh, over the Adriatic, down through the uh, Balkans and. Uh, down to Greece. Um, rather cool uh, there as well. This eastern part of Europe, so sort of um, Poland eastwards, that's a little bit warmer there and uh, quite a warm week coming up for western parts of Russia uh, as well where it has been hitherto quite a cool uh, summer. Precipitation remains very much like we've had all summer though, so uh, a large area of drier than average conditions through much of central western and uh, northwestern Europe as well uh, for the week ahead from the 18th to 24th of June, coming out substantially drier than average. Uh, Northern Scandinavia comes out a bit wetter than average up there in the week ahead. I mean, down through the Mediterranean, close to average, but overall, again, it looks a little bit more unsettled through the Med, particularly Portugal and over. Uh, towards Corsica, Sardinia and Italy, a little bit uh, wetter there uh, compared to Northern Europe, certainly. So the broad idea is the same, that Northern Europe is uh, rather dry, or very dry. Southern Europe is a little bit more uh, unsettled. Then we go through to week two, temperature anomalies. This takes us from the 25th of June to 1st of July. So the final week of June is looking like this. And very warm, if not hot conditions showing up across much of Western and uh, northwestern Europe. So the highest uh, anomalies to average are for Republic of Ireland, the UK, uh, parts of uh, southern Norway, and also parts of northern France. There we are up to three to six degrees warmer than average. That is a late June heat wave. So the extended ECMDF is picking up on this idea of a late uh, of the late June heat wave coming along next week. Much of northwestern Europe is warmer than average, up between 1 and 3 degrees. It's the south and the southeast of Europe, but again, it's rather cool. Um, so, been the case all summer. It's Mediterranean, cooler than average. Of course, it's still warm because we're talking about Mediterranean, but compared to average, that's where the cooler than average anomalies are, and the warmth is in the north and the west and central part of uh, Europe once again. 
precipitation looks like that. So it's an uh, ongoing north-south split, much of northern Europe, uh, generally north of the Alps, coming out drier than average. Another very dry week coming up southern Europe, so Portugal, uh, Spain, around the Balearic Islands, Corsica, Sardinia, Malta, uh, into Italy, and then over the Adriatic, down into the south of Europe, including parts of Greece. Again, we're coming out largely uh, with above average precipitation. So to the south of the Alps, uh, yes, we've got above average precipitation. To the north of the Alps, most parts of Europe, the UK and Ireland included in this, having a significantly drier than average week. Once again, the dry spell continues for much of northern Europe. That's week three temperature anomalies. Takes us from the 2nd through to the 8th of July, it remains a very warm scene across uh, most parts of Europe. You'll notice it's starting to warm up down into the Mediterranean, uh, going warm than average there. Uh, but generally just a really warm scene across the bulk of Europe. You have to go right to the very far north of Scandinavia, down uh, across western Russia, and then into the extreme southeast of Europe to find sort of uh, close to average temperatures. Actually not cool of an average even in those areas. But the bulk of Europe, again, including the UK and Ireland, coming out substantially warmer than average through this first week of July. The 2nd to the 8th of July looks warm to very warm. Precipitation anomalies are looking like that for week 3. 2nd to the 8th of July. So you notice that gradually the intensity of the colours is uh, easing down, but still the same broad idea, which is that Northern Europe, generally dry, Southern Europe is uh, wetter, just that we're losing the intensity of the colours, and that's probably because we're at, up to week three now. So very gradually the signal that the model is able to determine is lowering it. The signal is weakening, if you like. But essentially, still the same broad setup, which is Northern Europe dry, Southern Europe wetter uh, or close to average with the precipitation anomalies through that first week of July. Notice that across France, uh, we've gone from being drier than average to close to average. That might be hinting about a thundery breakdown is starting to develop across France through that first week of July after the heat in the last week of June. That's a bit speculative, but it's possible. Uh, this is week four, finally, temperature anomaly. This takes us from the 9th through to the 15th of July, so up to the middle, uh, middle part of the summer now, essentially. Uh, middle part of July, middle part of uh, summer 2018. Um, much of uh, central, northern, eastern Europe, warmer than average. It's a little bit cooler for the UK and for Ireland. Still generally a bit above average, but it's not as warm as it is, particularly at the end of June, but also for the early part of July. So temperatures look like they're gradually beginning to lower down a little bit. Again, that might just be because the model is losing the signal to some degree. Uh, much Scandinavia is going a little bit cooler and through the Mediterranean. Uh, well, it's a warm scene through the central uh, basin of the Mediterranean. So around this area just here, South France, uh, and then down into the Mediterranean islands. Um, it's quite warm there, but for Spain and Portugal, actually it's no better than average really. And for Italy, uh, not really much better than average either. So still the broad idea that the north of Europe is warm, the south of Europe is closer to average. Precipitation is weakening. Uh, the signal for precipitation is still very loosely the same sort of signal, which is drier in the north of Europe and more unsettled in the south of Europe. But Basically, most parts of Europe by this point, by the second week of July, the 9th to 15th of July, uh, essentially most places are just seeing average precipitation. And that might be because it's turning more unsettled, not especially wet, but it might be because it's turning more unsettled. But more likely, it's just that the model is uh, losing the signal. The further out it's going, the signal is weakening. Um, so we would have to wait until this period, this um, second week of July, 9th to 15th of July, we'd have to wait until that came within sort of weeks one and two to get a, a, a better idea of uh, exactly what's happening uh, there. It could be that it's turning more unsettled and so precipitation uh, rates are increasing, but more likely, I would think, uh, is that it's just, um, it's just a weakening uh, signal, if you like. 
So it looks like we're in for more warm weather. The warm summer of 2018 continues for many parts of Europe, particularly folks. It's a cooler week this week, but when we get through to next week, the final week of June is looking really warm, if not hot, across many parts of Europe. And the UK is included in that. I think we're going to get a heat wave next week. There'll be more about that in uh, today's second video. As we get through to July, possibly hinting of a very gradual cool down and increase in precipitation, probably via thunderstorms. But again, because we're talking about weeks three and four, it's also possible that this is just a, a gradually weakening signal, uh, if you like. And the signal is just slowly weakening down as we go through to weeks three and four. So we'll know more about the early part of July, I think, when we come to next week's uh, update. But certainly by, before we get to July, we're in for quite a lot of hot weather across much of uh, Northern Europe. And we will have more about that in today's second video, which will be coming up on the homepage this afternoon. All right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.